The SEC accused crypto exchanges Binance and Coinbase of violating US securities laws, offering unregistered securities and operating as unregistered venues, amongst other charges earlier this week. These are the two biggest crypto exchanges, and they account for more than half of global cryptocurrency trading volume. Binance was additionally accused of mixing billions of dollars of customer funds with a separate trading firm owned by its chief executive, Changpeng Zhao, known as CZ, and of being involved in wash trading to inflate its US platform's perceived trading volumes. The SEC is seeking to prevent the exchanges from violating securities regulation, requiring them to disgorge all ill-gotten gains and pay a monetary penalty. At Binance, the regulator is also seeking to permanently ban CZ, the CEO, from acting as an officer or director of any issuer whose securities are registered with the agency. In a separate filing, the SEC requested a temporary freeze on the assets of several Binance-linked entities. This rush to freeze the assets was based on what the SEC alleges was free movement of client funds, merged or rerouted mainly to two trading firms directly or indirectly owned by Binance chief executive CZ. Traders moved more than $800 million out of Binance in the 24 hours after the lawsuit was announced, and Binance.us announced yesterday that it was suspending US dollar deposits and that its banking partners are preparing to pause fiat dollar withdrawal channels as early as June 13th. After taking his role at the SEC two years ago, Chairman Gary Gensler began encouraging crypto trading platforms to register with the agency and has argued for quite some time that most digital tokens qualify as securities. His language became more insistent in the months after the spectacular failure of FTX last November. A good argument can be made that the SEC is shutting the barn door long after the horse has bolted. The Federal Trade Commission claimed in a report last year, which came out before the collapse of FTX, that cryptocurrency fraud had resulted in over $1 billion of losses. The losses that have occurred since that report have been significantly higher. Many are pointing out the mixed messages coming from regulators as the SEC approved Coinbase's direct listing last year, which is a little bit confusing, but of course getting approval for a securities listing is not a license to commit securities fraud. I think you need a, you need a separate license for that. There were some arguments in the past that the SEC was waiting for new legislation to be passed before they started cracking down on cryptocurrency fraud. But in the cases being brought this week, they're mostly relying on the Securities Act of 1934, an almost 90-year-old piece of legislation. It may be the case that last year, when cryptocurrency prices were soaring, regulators didn't want to be seen to be killing a new innovative industry. And now that crypto prices have collapsed and firms like FTX have been exposed as thinly disguised frauds, it's easier politically to step in and shut things down. Now, before we dig into all of the lawsuits, let me quickly tell you about today's video sponsor, Skillshare. You might know Skillshare for their popular classes in various skills and topics like photography and video editing. But did you know Skillshare has hundreds of career-focused classes too? Skillshare delivers customized classes to guide you on your learning journey. I recently finished a class called Productivity and Time Management by Ali Abdal. I'm involved in a number of different businesses which can consume quite a bit of my time, and the class helped me with productivity and time management tips that allow me to be more productive when I sit down to work, so that I have more me time, which really matters. That's just one example of the numerous classes available on Skillshare that can aid in achieving your personal and professional goals. Start your learning journey today with Skillshare. The first thousand of my viewers to join using the link in the description will get one month free of Skillshare so you can start on your learning journey today. 
The SEC filed 13 civil charges against Binance and its chief CZ on Monday. This comes after the CFTC, another regulator, sued Binance in March for operating illegally in the United States in a lawsuit that seeks fines and an injunction against the exchange. The CFTC case against Binance is mostly for letting big US customers like Jane Street and Tower Research trade on its offshore exchange where US customers are supposed to be prohibited. On Tuesday this week, the SEC went after Coinbase, accusing it of operating as an unregistered exchange since 2019 through its online platform, its prime brokerage, and its crypto wallet service. The SEC says that assets available on these venues meet the legal definition of securities, thus bringing Coinbase's operations squarely within the purview of the relevant securities laws. Gensler, the SEC chair, said that Coinbase's alleged failures deprive investors of critical protections, including rule books that prevent fraud and manipulation, proper disclosure, safeguards against conflicts of interest, and routine inspection by the SEC. On top of all of this, a task force of 10 US state regulators have come after Coinbase, alleging it violated state securities laws by offering its staking program to residents. Okay, so the SEC allegations against the two crypto exchanges are similar, but somewhat different. The complaint against Coinbase is mostly focused on the fact that Coinbase did not register with the SEC as a securities exchange the way that they're supposed to. The big accusation is that Coinbase's failure to register with the SEC has deprived investors of significant protections, including inspection by the SEC, record keeping requirements, and safeguards against conflicts of interest, among others. The complaint against Binance makes the same allegations but includes a number of additional allegations, like that the firm misrepresented trading controls and oversight that was happening on Binance's US platform. The SEC alleged that Binance and its CEO, CZ, had control of clients' assets, which allowed funds to be merged or rerouted, with billions of dollars being sent to a crypto asset trading firm incorporated in the British Virgin Islands, owned by Zhao called Merit Peak Limited. Assets were also allegedly diverted to a separate entity owned and controlled by Zhao called Sigma Chain, which the SEC says engaged in manipulative trading that inflated the Binance US platform's trading volume. The complaint alleges that Zhao and Binance secretly controlled customers' assets, allowing them to commingle and divert investor funds as they please. The complaint says that by 2021, at least $145 million was transferred from the US arm of Binance to a Sigma chain account, and another $45 million of funds were transferred from another corporate account to the Sigma chain account. From this account, Sigma chain spent $11 million dollars to buy a yacht. Now I think most crypto traders kind of get that you're not really a crypto exchange CEO without a yacht, but nonetheless there's a right way and a wrong way to buy a yacht, and regulators mostly want crypto CEOs to get their yacht the right way, or at least that's what they say. The SEC claims that Sigma Chain engaged in wash trading in 48 of 51 crypto assets that had been newly listed on the platform between January and June 2022 to boost the appearance of activity in those tokens and on the exchange. The complaint alleges that the day after Binance US opened for trading, wash trading between Sigma Chain accounts owned by Zhao or associated with Binance senior employees made up more than 99% of the initial hour of trading volume in at least one crypto asset. And yeah, I mean, that it does look bad, but at least there was 1% of legitimate trading. It's, it's not 100% bad. 
Uh, Binance is accused of deceiving investors into thinking that trading volumes on the platform were robust, real and reliable, according to the SEC. And they were 1% reliable, so who knows? The SEC chair, Gary Gensler, concluded that through 13 charges, we allege that Zhao and Binance entities engaged in an extensive web of deception, conflicts of interest, lack of disclosure and calculated evasion of the law. Binance's chief compliance officer doesn't appear to entirely disagree with that accusation, as he famously wrote in a communication with a colleague, we're operating as a f***ing unlicensed securities exchange in the USA, bro. I realize I'm getting old as I've never actually spoken to a compliance officer who calls people bro, but there's no law against that. As I mentioned earlier, the SEC is coming after these exchanges for violating the Securities Exchange Act of 1934, which regulates the trading of securities. So they're not being accused of illegally selling securities to raise money, which would come under the 33 Act, but rather of operating a trading venue for securities without registering as a securities exchange. U.S. securities exchange regulations require a separation of three key functions. The exchange, which matches trades between buyers and sellers, the broker-dealer, who trades on the exchange on behalf of customers, and the clearinghouse, who keeps electronic records, settles securities trades, and moves the money and securities around. In the crypto market and on these two exchanges, all three of these functions are combined. Now, there's nothing very new about the news of the SEC lawsuit against Coinbase. The SEC sent Coinbase a Wells notice earlier this year, informing them that the agency is planning to bring enforcement actions against them for running an unregistered exchange. You might thus think that Coinbase simply need to register with the SEC, separate the key functions and get on with business. But that's not really the way things work. The SEC's policies make it impossible for crypto asset trading platforms to register and operate in compliance with the regulatory framework for securities exchanges. Firstly, registered securities exchanges can only trade securities, but SEC rules and guidance largely prevent crypto assets the things that they actually trade, from being registered as securities. While the tokens meet the legal definition of securities, they don't generally meet the standards that would be required for a security to be registered in the United States. As a result, there are virtually no crypto assets that a compliant registered securities exchange could list and trade. Secondly, even if there were crypto assets registered as securities, existing SEC rules and guidance make it impossible for crypto asset trading platforms to register and comply with the requirements applicable to securities exchanges for three big reasons. First, only registered broker dealers can trade on an exchange, but SEC rules have effectively prevented registered broker dealers from handling crypto assets. Second, crypto asset trading platforms registered as securities exchanges could no longer provide custody services, but SEC guidance largely prevents the custody of crypto assets by qualified custodians. Third, the SEC has not provided a way for a registered crypto asset trading platform to comply with clearing rules. So the SEC has been telling crypto exchanges to come in and register, but then they haven't really provided a path where that could be done. So these enforcement actions can be read as being designed to shut down crypto exchanges rather than to force them to register. Matt Levine at Bloomberg describes this request as a dark joke from the regulator and argues that the enforcement actions are meant to shut down crypto exchanges, not to force them to register. A big point in this lawsuit is whether crypto tokens are securities or not. The SEC's argument is that most crypto tokens, but not all of them, not Bitcoin, which they've decided is a commodity, and not Dogecoin, which is obviously a joke, but the rest are securities under US law. 
Coinbase's view is that many of them, in particular the ones that they have listed on their exchange, are not securities. The SEC cites a list of tokens in the complaints that were listed on the two exchanges, saying that they are definitely securities. Under US law, the Howey test is used to determine if something is a security or not. If there's an investment of money in a common enterprise with an expectation of profits to come solely from the efforts of others, that's a security. This is a fairly broad definition and most crypto tokens would qualify as securities under that test. The SEC began their crypto crackdown in 2017 by outlawing ICOs or initial coin offerings, where a crypto project would raise money by selling crypto tokens to public investors. The majority of ICOs turned out to be vaporware or simple scams taking advantage of gullible retail investors. The tokens were obviously securities and the ICOs were obviously unregistered securities offerings. The SEC had a pretty easy time making this argument in court. The crypto industry worked around the ICO ban by selling tokens at first to accredited investors like venture capitalists and crypto hedge funds. These were then considered private offerings and exempt from registration requirements. Once these investors had held onto the tokens for a suitable period of time, usually a year, they could dump them or sell them onto the public because SEC Rule 144 allows public resale of restricted and controlled securities if a number of conditions are met. There are over 10,000 crypto tokens trading today, and the SEC has only gone after a few of them as unregistered securities offerings. The SEC could likely go after these 10,000 or more tokens under the Securities Act of 1933 at some point in the future, as virtually none of them provide the sort of financial and business disclosure that a public company would have to disclose to its shareholders, and lots of them trade freely on crypto exchanges where US retail investors are allowed to buy them. The SEC is at present cracking down on crypto by going after the exchanges, but that doesn't mean that they won't go after individual tokens at some point in the future. It equally shouldn't be a surprise if they went after crypto hedge funds and venture capitalists over token resales either. Michael Barr, the Federal Reserve's Vice Chair for Supervision, in a speech to the US Senate last year, said that the crypto sector requires effective oversight that includes safeguards to ensure that crypto companies are subject to similar regulatory safeguards as other financial services providers. Gary Gensler has similarly said that nothing about the crypto markets is incompatible with the securities laws. Investor protection is just as relevant regardless of underlying technologies. Now, I'm not sure how wise it is to apply securities laws to the crypto sector at all. There's a good argument to be made that crypto is nothing like traditional financial instruments. It does nothing to support any real world economic activity. Crypto is possibly more like a gambling product or a collectible than a true financial product, and thus it shouldn't be regulated by securities regulators, other than if it's being used as part of a Ponzi scheme or something like that. For those who argue that crypto is a new technology that will change the world like the internet did, I'd point out that the internet solved all sorts of problems within months of its appearance. And while crypto has been around for more than 13 years, there doesn't seem to be much of a use case other than gambling on the price of mostly useless tokens and bad artwork. Making everything that someone out there feels is an investment into an actual investment for regulatory purposes might be a mistake. You could start adding all sorts of money-making schemes to the list after crypto. The main reason that I think regulators should ignore crypto is that regulation would possibly give crypto a veneer of respectability and the appearance of an official seal of approval from the regulator, which is possibly contrary to the goals of securities regulators. 
the crypto system today doesn't appear to pose much of a risk to financial stability beyond what we've seen with Silvergate and signature banks. Any perceived regulatory seal of approval would likely encourage banks and asset managers to get involved in crypto, making the banking system more vulnerable to price collapses in crypto assets should they occur. The people involved in crypto don't seem to want to be regulated either, and there are all sorts of buyer beware unregulated things out there that people invest in, like art, antiques, stamps, trading cards, or beanie babies. The world of collectibles is filled with fraud too, and people invest in these things with the goal of making a profit, but regulators don't see a need to step in and stop them. It's not obviously the government's place to stop people from doing unwise things with their money. Now, it might make sense to regulate crypto the way gambling is regulated. Consumers might need the types of legal protection they get at a casino. Additionally, law enforcement needs to crack down on money laundering, fraud, and any other legal violations that are happening in the crypto space, but there are already laws in the books against these activities. Overall, the SEC, the CFTC, and the Federal Reserve probably should not be involved in crypto from a regulatory perspective, except to tell the businesses that they regulate that they can't get involved in crypto. Interest in crypto trading and investing has been fading fast over the last year. The people who get excited about the new new thing are all busy talking about AI today, and crypto trading volumes have been falling steadily. Yes, Bitcoin is up a lot year to date, but that may be more a function of American investors having a much harder time getting their money out of crypto now that the two main crypto banks, Silvergate and Signature, have collapsed than any real resurgence of interest. Left alone, crypto would likely become a niche interest for a small group of people, not unlike stamped collecting Pokemon cards and things like that. It looks like the overall goal of US regulators is to stamp out crypto altogether in the United States, and they're starting with the exchanges and could well go after the most popular tokens that can be easiest classified as securities next. If you found this video interesting, you should watch this one next. Don't forget to check out our sponsor Skillshare using the link in the description below. Have a great week and see you in the next video. Bye.